now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks. <laughs> well, Daddy, played by Hanley Stafford, is all set for a swell outing. He has an appointment to go fishing with some friends. And as our scene opens, it is 4.30 in the morning, and he's about to leave the house. Listen. Well, I guess I have everything. Tackle box, rods, net, thermos. Uh-oh. Mustn't forget my wading boots. Ah. Well, now I've got to sneak past the kids' room and... Uh... Hello, Daddy. Oh, uh, what's the use of saying prayers? <laughs> Where are you going, Daddy? I'm going fishing. You want to make something out of it? Uh-huh. Now, look out. i got to hurry. Why? Now, Snooks, I'm not going to stand here and argue with you. It's 4.30 in the morning, and everybody in his right mind is sleeping. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? I suppose you think I'm crazy because I get up so early to go fishing, don't you? No, Daddy. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear you say that. Your mother doesn't seem to understand my little hobbies. What hobby? Oh, a hobby is something that a man takes up outside of his regular work. Something that relaxes him. Some people collect stamps... Others do woodwork. And... Does Uncle Louie make a hobby? Yes, Uncle Louie etches. Huh? I said your Uncle Louie spends his spare time etching. Why don't he scratch himself? <laughs> well, I'll explain it to you some other time. Now, let me go and I'll bring you back a fishy. How do you know you will? How do I know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just about the best fisherman in the world, that's all. Remember last time I went? I brought home a sack full. And Mommy wouldn't let you bring them in the house. Ah, don't remind me of it. And such beautiful fish, too. Oh, I had three barracuda and one smelt. They all smelt. <laughs> they did not. You're getting more like your mother every day. What's in that little pen, Daddy? Worms. I want to see them. Well, I haven't got time. Oh, please, Snooks. It'll be soon too late to go fishing. How is fishies born, Daddy? Well, the fish lay eggs. Like a chicken? No. A chicken only lays one egg at a time, but a fish lays hundreds of eggs. Why? Oh, I don't know. Let me get out of here. Does fish cackle when they lay eggs? No. Only a hen cackles. The hen lays the egg, then she sits on it. Did anybody sit on me? (laughs) No. But it would have been a good idea. (laughs) Oh, Snooks, I'll be late for my fishing appointment if you keep asking me questions. How are you going to catch the fish, Dad? With a hook. You tie a hook on your line and let it go to the bottom. Why does it go to the bottom? Because I take along a big sinker. Is Uncle Louie going? <laughs> no, Uncle Louie is not going. You said he was. I didn't say anything about Uncle Louie. I said I take along a big sinker. Oh, I thought you. Now, never mind that. <laughs> yeah, I did. That's no way to talk about your Uncle Louie. You always say it, Daddy. Well, uh, I know him better than you do. Besides, I have no time to discuss it with you now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Daddy! Oh, now what is it? How are you going to catch the fishy? I told you with a hook. You tie a hook to your line, then you bait the hook and drop it in the water. And pretty soon you feel a bite. Then you know what you do? Uh-huh. What? I don't know. <laughs> well, you set your hook. Like this. <clears throat> then you start to reel him in. Careful. Keep his head up. See him? Huh? Look at him whiz. Now, don't give him any slack. Reel in fast. Bring him right to the surface. Ha <laughs> ha, there he is. Look at that fish. What a beauty. You feel all right, Daddy? <laughs> I feel fine, and it's getting late. I gotta go. I wanna go with you. Now, don't you start that. And I won't stand for any more nonsense. If you don't take me out. You, you'll what? I'll eat up all your worms. <laughs> Snooks, now put that can down. Oh, what am I going to do with you? Don't take me with you, Daddy. No! This is one time you're not going to bully me into giving in. Now, go ahead and eat the worm. See if I can. Well, tell me your story and I'll let you go. Oh. All right, but a quick one. Did you ever hear the story about the 12 apples and only 10 were good? No. Too bad. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> what are you yelling about? It was too short. Tell me your story about some fish. Oh, no. Well, look, I... Uh... I know a joke about fishing. You want to hear it? Uh-huh. And will you promise to let me go if I tell you? Uh-huh. Okay, but no interruptions. Uh-huh. There were once two Irishmen named Pat and Mike. And one day, they rented a boat and went out fishing. Who rented a boat? Pat and Mike. Well, they found a good spot in the middle of the lake. And they caught a lot of fish. 
and Mike wanted to remember where they caught them. So he said to Pat, Be jabers, Pat. Tis thinking I am that we'd better be coming back here tomorrow. <laughs> Why, what are you laughing at? <laughs> That's a funny joke, Daddy. Tell me another one. I haven't finished this one yet. <laughs> ah. Well, anyway, Mike wanted to remember where he caught the fish so they could come back the next day. And what do you think the darn fool did? I know. He made a mark on the side of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> the darn fool! <laughs> Isn't that the silliest thing you ever heard? Yeah, sure. <laughs> How did he know he'd get the same boat? <laughs> now, you'll get the joke, all right. I can see that. I ain't smart, Daddy. Oh, sure. I'll give you a medal when I come home. So long. Daddy! Oh, what is it? I want a pair of rubber boots like yours. No, you can't have rubber boots. Why? I'll think of a reason later. Goodbye. Ah! Oh, sure, please. Then buy me some rubber boots. Now, you listen. I'll tell you a very sad story about a little girl who wanted rubber boots. And she cried till she got them. Would they fit me? <laughs> yes. And one day there came a great big rain. And the silly little girl put on the rubber boots and went wading in the deepest puddle she could find. So her feet got all wet. And that night she contracted a bad cold. Well, the cold got worse. And in two days, she had pneumonia. Mm-hmm. So her father called in the biggest doctors, but none of them could save his child. The crisis came, and just at the stroke of midnight, the poor little girl died. Her broken-hearted father buried her in a little grave, right on the top of a green hill. And every year, he puts a flower on it. Now, doesn't that make you stop and think? Mm-hmm. Well, what are you thinking about? What did they do with the boots, Daddy? Ah, good boy. Bye-bye! 